Morgan Stanley warns a big crash in stocks is coming. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And Morgan Stanley's most bearish analyst is warning that stocks are going to crash this summer, and it's going to be more pain for investors who are betting on a big bear market bounce. Let's head over to Morgan Stanley where we pick up his story and see why he thinks stocks are headed down. And we look at the weekly warm-up as revisions head lower, but it takes time as the U.S. dollar enters the picture. And I want to suggest that this dollar story is going to be something you're going to hear a lot more of in the coming quarters when companies report their earnings because a strong dollar, as we'll talk about today, is not something that companies really want. Negative earning revision cycles are slow to play out. As expected, earnings revision breadth has moved into negative territory. Now, what do they mean by earnings revision breadth? Breath is looking at participation. So what he's suggesting here is that companies are revising their earnings and projecting them to be negative or fall in the future. And so what he's suggesting is more companies are starting to come out and do that after they've already reported their earnings. And But this is not negative enough yet to take the earnings per share down. In absence of an obvious shock-like recession, companies are slow to guide down. This time should be no different, which means stocks can hang around current levels until the second quarter earnings season when the next leg lower is likely to begin and end. And so what he's saying here is in the second quarter, we're going to see this negative earnings breath really show up as companies guide lower. But he says that may just be where it ends. But let's keep going with the story and find out what's going on here as the largest S&P 500 weights have outperformed the most during the COVID era. The largest 5% of S&P 500 stocks are trading at a 40% median premium to pre-COVID levels compared to 17% for the broader market. One could say that the market has worked efficiently with the largest and most stable companies acting the most defensively within the index. However, this potentially presents downside scenario well where these stocks could be the final shoe to drop before we exit the current bear market. So what happens in a market cap weighted index as new money comes in, it flows into the largest companies. So what is happening during this bear market now is as money continues to flow in, it's going in, most of the money is going into these top 5% stocks. So it appears that these companies are immune to any downside risk, but this is just the design of market cap weighting. It actually can cause the market to stay elevated even when the rest of the stocks in the index are heading lower. But what he's trying to suggest here is if indeed people start selling, well, it could bring that top 5% down and cause a bigger crash. And think of this, because when everyone starts to sell the same stocks that everyone owns because they're in the same market cap weighted index, well, it's like being in a building that's on fire and having one exit. When it goes, everyone's trying to get out and they can't get out fast enough. Negative earnings revision breath is a slow bleed, he says, over the past several months, we've been highlighting the declining trend in earnings revision breath. We thought it would turn outright negative during the first quarter earnings seasons, but that's where we are. However, we've been a slow bleed towards zero. This is why forward 12-month earnings per share estimates continue to grind higher for the S&P 500 as people don't believe that this is going to last. And here you can see their chart for earnings revision breath is declining and sitting right around zero. On that score, even Microsoft and Apple are starting to see negative revisions this past week. In the case of Microsoft, the company is blaming currency, a story we're going to hear more of in the future. As for Apple, it's more of the highly valued services business that is likely to disappoint, according to Morgan Stanley analysts. Now, what I want to do is look at this in a way we all can understand. They're talking about earnings breadth. This is something a little more complex, but let's bring it down to charts that not only you can access, but we can all understand. And one thing we all get is company profit. So let's head over to the Fred database and let's put this test on what's going on with corporate profits and the dollar to the test. So here we see corporate profits after tax. And what you want, what I want to point out on this chart is ever since outsourcing and the, and the dollars of reserve currency, everybody started to figure this out. And the idea is we need to export jobs, particularly manufacturing jobs, and dollars with them. You'll notice that corporate profits went up. And if you've ever been wondering why all these calls to bring jobs back to the U.S. get rejected, well, the big executives of these companies make a ton of money on exporting U.S. labor and U.S. dollars 
and this chart is why. But now let's take a look at the relationship between this and the nominal broad US dollar index. And what you'll notice is, well, there doesn't appear to be much of a relationship you know, between corporate profits and the dollar here now in red. But when we put them on a year over year rate of change, that changes the entire picture. And what happens is as the dollar gains strength, here you see in red, corporate profits on year over year rate of change decline. And you'll notice that as the dollar falls, corporate profits rise and you see that relationship going on you see it here in 2015 you see it again now uh, back in tw starting in 2020 2021 as the dollar came down profits rise now we're seeing the dollar rally and again this is a story where i think we're going to hear from companies more companies like microsoft saying hey the dollar is a problem because the advantage to exporting jobs goes away when current when the dollar starts to gain strength relative to other com com countries and their currencies it takes away that advantage and so as the dollar gains strength well then all of a sudden corporate profits profits from all this outsourcing head lower and companies start to complain. But perhaps more Stanley's analysts are betting that the dollar is going to peak and perhaps come down. Something I'm not sure is going to happen. But let's continue on with our story because in short, the earnings risk now is understood. I don't agree with that and we're going to challenge that in price. So the market's looking forward to better growth next year. In absence of further revisions in the near term, that view can hold up for now. And it doesn't make a lot of sense because we just talked about this week, you know, Target, Walmart, and other retailers are seeing their inventory levels rise. So the notion is they're going to clear out all that inventory very quickly and get back onto even key along with everyone else well seems a little bit far-fetched but let's go a little further here in the Morgan Stanley story uh, however earnings revisions don't re-accelerate we think the price remains wrong with equity risk premium at 290 basis points as compared to our fair market value of 345 basis points this is why we still think it will be difficult for the equity market to make much upward progress this summer and fall from current levels suggesting they think the equity market has peaked out and either the price will need to come down to reflect the earnings risk or the estimates will need to fall. We think both will happen over the course of second and third quarter earnings seasons as companies come to the confessional one by one, particularly with Microsoft highlighting risk from currency. We think investors hoping for a quick reversal of earning revision breath may be disappointed and therefore they remain open-minded to the idea of stocks hanging around current levels and even rallying further in the near term especially if there's some kind of ceasefire in the russia ukraine war however even if that were to happen we don't think it reverses the fire and ice that is now well established but incomplete bottom line the bear market rally that began a few weeks ago can continue for a few more weeks until the fed makes it crystal clear they remain hawkish and earnings revisions fall well into negative territory a dynamic the seasonals should support and that combination should ultimately take the S&P 500 down to 3,400 by mid late August. And so what they're saying is, look, we have the Fed meeting coming up now in less than a week. And if they remain hawkish and, and plan on continuing to put out rate hikes, well, the story of a bear market rally could come to an end. And how far can stocks head down? Well, if he's right and he heads down to 3,400, we're looking at a drop of about 17% from current levels. That would be about a 30% drop from the peak, suggesting a fairly mild bear market before this turns around. But I maybe I think Morgan Stanley's picture is a bit too optimistic, which we'll get into here in a moment. Now, if you're concerned about how your portfolio will hold up in another 17% drop in the market, well, you shouldn't be. Be sure to check out Portfolio Shield, strategy uniquely designed to hedge bear market risk. I'll also put a link in the description below. So let's head over now and look at some more charts to see if these Morgan Stanley analysts are completely off their rocker and that perhaps stocks are going even lower than they think. So let's go back to the corporate profits after tax where we have on the year over year rate change in blue and let's overweigh the consumer price index in red also on a year over year rate change. And I want to point out that where you see periods where the consumer price index is rising and you'll notice that pro corporate profits are falling. Now you would think the exact opposite would happen. Here you see it again, CPI rising, profits falling, CPI rising, profits falling. So what are we seeing here is the fact that consumers are rejecting higher prices. And so that means corporate profits profits fall as they ultimately have to discount to move inventory in the case of the current situation due to supply chain issues they've got a lot of inventory they need to clear before the next round of inventory starts showing up and let's look at other times here we see inflation start to come down and that is 
boost for corporate profits, inflation staying low or remaining down, and you see corporate profits go up. So now we're seeing inflation obviously very high, suggesting that corporate profits are coming down even more. But another way to look at it is what about the equity market? Is a stock market perhaps an even better barometer for corporate profits and let's overlay the Wilshire 5000 and here we see the corporate profits do an excellent or the stock market does an excellent job of leading corporate profits here you can see the stock market leading lower corporate profits falling stock market headed down profits headed down and now stock market is saying corporate profits are headed lower and of course you know why is that that is the wealth effect as people have less money they feel less wealthy well in turn they spend less but but we still haven't gotten into the federal reserve which is going to continue tightening and here you can see the monetary base of the fed's balance sheet which they're going to start unwinding next week against the wilshire 5000 and notice that the the two are fairly in sync now uh, that wasn't always the case but following the, the start of quantitative easing notice now we see in modern day times of, mo of central banking that there's a nice relationship here so what it's suggesting is as the monetary base on a year of rate change continues to go negative it's going to bring the stock market down with it and now when we overlay corporate profits notice there's a lag here so you see as the monetary base goes down corporate profits lag to the downside well that tells us that if the fed's going to continue to unwind here then what it means is corporate profits are going to continue to fall maybe morgan stanley's betting on the fed capitulating but it seems unlikely because remember we've got to take inflation from eight percent down to two it's a whole different ball game when you're going from say three or four down to two eight to two is a big drop it's got to be a lot of fed tightening means lower equity prices and lower profits for corporations now let's take a shift here over to the ecb who prefer this and no more talk about monetary policy as they plan july rate increases as inflation problem deepens and the policy shift will help narrow the gap with the fed as the u.s and eurozone inflation rates converge in an usually detailed statement, the ECB said it intends to raise its key rate by a quarter percentage point its next policy meeting July to minus 0.25%, increase it again in September, possibly by more than a quarter percentage point. It said it would end its large-scale bond buying program on July 1. And part of the reason it has to, and I want you to understand, is when the Fed, the central bank, effectively the central bank of the world, even though they're not actually, but they're in control of the global reserve currency, when they tighten, unless other central banks are tightening at an equal or faster pace, they're going to experience higher inflation in those countries. So what was going to happen in Europe is if the ECB doesn't tighten, well, then they're going to have an even bigger inflation problem on top of the big inflation problem they have now. So they're under the gun here, but you'll see that they're not really tightening all that quick as the Fed gets ready to set this thing into high gear. After September, the ECB said expects a gradual but sustained path of further increases in interest rates. Unusually, the bank published its new staff inflation forecast in its policy statement, showing the eurozone inflation of 3.5% in 2023 and 2.1% in 2024. Only way that's going to happen is they have a massive recession, which they could. Inflation pressures have broadened and intensified with prices for many goods and services increasing strongly. And the ECB's policy shift would come about a year after years on inflation rose above its 2% target. It would help, and this is a key point, it would help narrow the gap with the Federal Reserve, which has increased interest rates twice since March, and is scheduled to increase them three more times in the next four months and to start quantitative tightening. Under the ECB plans, this key rate would rise to zero or higher after a September 8th policy mean exiting negative territory for the first time in eight years. As some prominent economists have recently faulted major central banks for that strategy, Mervyn King, the former governor of the Bank of England, said last month that policymakers pumped too much money in the global economy at a time when many businesses were closed. Central banks are now risk doing too little and return inflation to target, he said in a recent interview. And what we're seeing is we're going from one extreme, you know, of massive fiscal monetary easing to the opposite of now massive fiscal and monetary tightening. And people believe that is bullish for stocks. Well, if you're going from one extreme that was bullish for stocks to another extreme, the odds are it's going to be really bearish for stocks. If you simply print lots of money at a time when you're producing less, you've got a classic case of too much money chasing too few goods. 
The result of that is inflation. It was a mistaken diagnosis, Mr. King said. They shouldn't have been printing the extra money. What governments were doing was enough to deal with the consequences of COVID. And that is the risk now that they have to undo all those policies. And at an extreme rate, as many consumers are falling further and further behind due to this inflation. And what now is the next catalyst we see in today's news is unemployment claims are now starting to rise. And that is the risk that we've been saying is coming as the equity market heads lower. And here you can see today, while remaining very low at 229,000, historically low, we're coming off of low levels, an increase of 27,000 last week, new claims. The good news is that workers that are on unemployment seem to be having no trouble finding work as the total number of claims fell over 35,000 to 1.283. Of course, the risk now is when those new claims continue to rise and those existing claims continue to see people holding on to that as they can't find new work. And that's how you know the U.S. economy is set for a major shift here. And the, perhaps the Morgan Stanley call for a major crash this summer could only be the beginning of a deeper bear market. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.